Hello, Mr. Barton here, and in this video I seek to answer the question, what is a diagnostic question? Because on the face of it, you might be tempted to think diagnostic questions are simply plain old multiple choice questions. But that is only half the story. Because whilst it's true diagnostic questions are multiple choice questions, every wrong answer has been chosen very specifically to reveal a precise misconception that a child has. Because for years um, in my teaching career, I'd been making a mistake. I'd been assuming that students could either do a topic or not do a topic. But that's a load of rubbish. Because what I found is that students can either do a topic or they can't do a topic for lots of different reasons. And it's through diagnostic questions that we can identify the specific misconceptions that students have and depending on the misconception they have, depending on the reason that they can't access a piece of content or a topic or a skill, well, that's gonna dictate the specific support they're gonna need from me as their teacher. Now, probably the best way to illustrate this is by means of a couple of examples. So here we go. Now, I'm a bit biased here, but this diagnostic question means a lot to me because it was one of the first I ever wrote and I wrote it with a trainee teacher years ago. And we used it with a year seven class when we were about to um, introduce them to the concept of compound area. And we wanted to assess their baseline knowledge when it comes to simple areas, um, areas of rectangles in this case. So we asked them this question, find the area of the shape above. Now, hopefully if my math is right, and often it isn't, B is the correct answer to this 70 centimeters squared. But can you see what specific misconception each of the three alternative answers reveals? So if a child, for example, answered A, 17 centimetres, what would that tell you about their understanding? Well, it would tell me that they think to get area, they simply add the two numbers together instead of multiply. Quite a major misconception. But compare that to C. Students who'd answered C have gone for 34. What are they thinking? Well, I reckon they're confusing the concept of area with perimeter. Now that's a different misconception and the help you give those students is gonna be different to the help you give the students who answer A. And finally, what about D, 35? Where the flipping neck does 35 centimeters come from? Well, this is for students who have been told so many times that to get the area of a triangle, you do base times height and halve it, they're just halving everything in sight. So they've done 10 times seven and divided their answer by two. Now again, it's not the case that students can do area of rectangles or can't. They either can do it or they can't do it in very specific uh, ways. And depending on the answer they give to this question, that's gonna give you an insight into where their specific misconception lies. Let me show you another one. What about this? I love a tree diagram. What is the probability of winning two games in a row? Now again, if my maths is right, I think the correct answer to this is D. 0.16. But what do each of the other wrong answers reveal to you about the student's understanding of this topic? And this is where it gets really interesting. So take A, 1.6. Now for me, that child understands the concepts of probability and even tree diagrams. They know that to get the answer, they've got to multiply the two branches with 0.4 together. However, their misconception lies when it comes to multiplying decimals. They've got place value issues, not probability issues. Now compare that to the child who answers B, 0.8. What have they done? Well, they've added 0.4 and 0.4 together. Is that a misconception with decimals? I don't think so. That's a misconception with probability and dealing with tree diagrams, a different misconception. And finally, what about the child who answers C, 0.25? Where does that come from? Well, for me, that's a different misconception again. That's working on the assumption that there are four possible outcomes and each of them are equal. So I'm not even taking into account the values of the decimals on the branches of the tree diagrams. So hopefully you can see from these simple questions, you can learn so much about a child's understanding and specifically how you can help them overcome their misconception. Now I know what you're thinking, when do we use these in lessons? How do we deal with the different child's response? How do I ask them? All that kind of stuff. We're gonna cover all that in later videos. This is just to give you a sense of what an actual diagnostic question is all about. So I'll see you in a later video. Bye for now.